Esther chapter 2. We look into the tribulation time of the Jewish. And we see out with a Gentile queen. In with a Jewish queen. After these things, chapter 1. When the wrath of King Ahasuerus was appeased. First time that word shows up. He remembered Vastai what she had done. Disobeyed him. And what he and what was decreed against her. First time that shows up, decree the law. Every man shall be held responsible for his house. Every man, every woman shall give their husband honor. Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, took care of him, helped him. Let there be fair young virgins, not been with ever been with a man. Sexually pure, sought for the king. Matthew 25 and Revelation 14, virgins. The 144,000 are virgin males. That don't fit the Jehovah's Witnesses. The uh, Matthew 25, and I can't think remember if 14 virgins or not, but they were Jewish. Some had oil, some didn't have oil. Some went in, some didn't go in. Let the king appoint officers, men in charge, in all provinces, and the provinces are mentioned in chapter 1, verse 1, of his kingdom, that they may gather together all fair young virgins, got to be young, unto Shishan the powers, to the house of the women. So here's a building specifically for women, no co-ed, unto the custody of Hig Hagia, Higgy, the king's chamberlain. So this is in charge of all the women that are going to be gathered up. Keeper of the women. And let their things for purification be given to them. We're going to look at that in a moment. And let the maiden which pleases the king be queen instead of Vestai. So, king, we're going to present to you all these virgins. Which one is yours? And the thing pleased the king, and he did so. All right, here we go. Now in Shishan the palace, there was a certain Jew. And that's the first time the word Jew shows up in the Bible. Whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jar, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjaminite. Not Kish, who was king of Israel. And not also the Shimei that, of the family that cursed David. who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity, which had been carried away with Jeconiah, the king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. That's back in uh, the first attack, 606 B.C., Second Chronicles, and Jeremiah speaks about. And he brought up Hatshua, that is Esther, the now, Hashua is the Hebrew name. Esther is the Persian name. Hadish, the, the Hebrew name, means myrtle or joy. Esther, the Persian name, means hidden. When you get in the time of the tribulation period, there's going to be a time when those Jews are going to be hidden. Revelation 12. And why do we always look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the, the, the names of Babylon given to the three uh, Hebrew children in Daniel, and yet also has Esther is the Persian name. Pointed out. You know, a lot of Jewish people today, their name is not not. Jewish is not Hebrew. They have taken on other names since World War II when they were sought out and wanted to be destroyed during World War II by the Nazis and Hitler. And to protect themselves, they gotten themselves other names. And a lot of those names were Gentile names. His uncle's daughter, Mordecai's family relation uh, of Esther is family for she had neither father nor mother and the maid was fair and beautiful whom Mordecai when her father and mother were dead took her for his own daughter 
adopted. Esther's parents were killed or died out. They are in the land of Babylon. And the only relative it looks like that she has is Mordecai, and he has taken her to be his daughter. So it came to pass when the king's commandment and his decree was heard, and when many maidens were gathered together into Shisha in the palace, to the custody of Higgi, 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 the Esther was brought also unto the king's house, into the custody of Haggai, keeper of the women. So she's rounded up with all the other women. She's a one woman, one of the women of many of the women. And the maiden pleased him, Haggai, 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 and she obtained kindness of him, Haggai, and he speedily gave her things for purification to be clean. To be right, to smell right, to be pure, with such things as belonged to her, and seven maidens which were meet to be given her out of the king's house. And here is where you would get the bride and her mates, the bridal party of, of the the bridesmaids. It comes out of the Bible. Here's a woman preparing. And she doesn't know she's going to be married yet, but she's preparing herself to present herself to possibly her future husband, the king. And she's got to be right. She's got to be clean. She's got to be fit. She's got to be groomed. And she needs help. And when you get the bridesmaid, they, their job is to help the, the bride be clean, her hair, her nails, the dress, and everything. And to be witnesses also of the marriage ceremony. And he preferred her, that's Haggai, and her maids unto the best place of the house of the women. So this is before the king lays eyes on her. Esther's already had the dominance of the people that have met her, and she has reserved a special place by these people. Now, God is not mentioned in Esther or the Lord or Jehovah, and yet you can see the Lord working through the Jewish people, the Jewish queen Esther, behind the scenes, set forth. Esther had not shown her people or her kindred, Hebrew, Jewish. She didn't tell race yet or religion. For Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. So she obeys the man that has adopted her to be her father. She is obedient to him. Okay, I won't tell him who I am. And Mordecai walked every day before the court of the women's house. And there's that house. It was a courtyard. Proper. Not co-ed. With people who are chaperones and in charge of that house, Haggai, to know how Esther did and what should become of her. So she's turned over to the government to be presented before the king to find out who he's going to choose as his next wife, as the next queen. And Mordecai, who is, who is her father by adoption, cares for his daughter that he's going out, okay, how's she doing? Where is she? What happened to her today? Now when every maid's turn was come to go into King Esther's, after that she had been 12 months, according to the manner of women, parentheses is a note, for so were the days of their purifications accomplished to wet to know, six months of oil of myrrh, and six months of sweet odors, and with other things for the purifying the women and make them clean, make them pure, make them presentable before the king. And there will probably be a, uh, a right of the kingdom that these women had to do. Tradition. Then does every, then does came every maiden unto the king. Whatsoever she desired was given her 
to go with her out of the house of the women unto the king's house. You want a mint stole? You want a diamond ring? You want your hair done? You want this specific dress? You got it. A lot of times a bride is given, you go to that to the to the dress store and you pick it out. And in the evening she went. And on the morrow she returned to the second house of the women. Now 1314 is telling us what happens to all the women. In 15, we'll get to Esther. But this is what happened to women. They went from the first house to the second house. To the custody of Shaska. He's in charge of the other house, the second house. The king's chamberlain, which kept the concubines. Secondary wives, but they're still wives. She came in into the king no more. They were not chosen. Except the king delighted her that she were called by name. Now this is a rule and a law set forth in the kingdom that even the queen could not come to the king's residence except the king called. And we'll see Esther telling us later on, Lord willing, in the book, I had not been called if he don't hold out that golden scepter to me. I'm dead. Even the wife needed permission from the husband for the kingdom, for the king to say, you just can't walk in here. Now, when the turn of Esther, Esther's turn, the daughter of Abahiah, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go into the king, unto the king. She required nothing. She's content. She took what was given to her and then asked for anything else. There's no coveting. But what Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women, appointed. So whatever was given to her, that pleased her. She didn't go in above beyond what was offered. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. So she's well favored. So Esther was taken unto the king as her is into his royal into his house royal in the tenth month gentile number which is the month Tebeth, in the seventh seventh complete year of his reign seventh year of the tribulation period jesus christ comes and takes the nation of israel the remnant into jerusalem And the king loved Esther above all women. God's all finished with the nation of Israel. No, he's not. There's one nation above all the nations of all the worlds of all nations that there were. And it's the nation of Israel. God don't love America more than he loves Israel. To no nation but Israel did God say, I will bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. And she obtained grace. And favor in his sight more than all the virgins so that he set the royal crown upon her head she is now queen and made her queen instead of Esther out with the Gentile queen in with the Jewish queen then the king made a great feast the third feast in this in this book it's a holiday Unto all the prince, all his princes and his servants, the higher ups, those to be known in the palace. The second feast was given to all the people. The third feast is those of the the, the king, the palace. Remember Matthew twenty four. Some of the virgins went in. Some of the virgins didn't go in. Not everybody's invited here. Even Esther's feast. And he made a release to the promises and gave gifts according to the state of the king. Jesus Christ is called the gift of God. And when the virgins were gathered together the second time, then Mordecai sat, that, sat in the king's gate. These are the ones that were rejected. 
I believe the virgins were sitting at a door or gate in Matthew. Esther had not shown her kindred nor her people, Hebrew or Jewish, as Mordecai had charged her. For Esther did the commandment of, Mor of Mordecai, obeyed her father, that was adopted, like as when she had br brought up with him. Obedience. Now here's a note that's going to play out in chapter 3. Here is by God, though not mentioned in the book of Esther, God working behind the scene that God may have his plan be happening. And we saw this in Ezra. We know here's the decree, stop building the temple until I give word again. And there was word again that they could continue building the temple. And here is something that God's going to use that no one knows about. And it's going to be used for the authority and power of God, though he's not mentioned, though he's not named in this book. Listen, the God of the tribulation period will be Satan. In those days, while Mordecai sat in the king's gate of authority, rulership, two of the king's chamberlains, Big Thin and Tirish, of those which kept the door, doorkeepers, were wroth. They were angry. And sought to lay hand on King Asherah. We don't know if it's to kill him, to kidnap him, or do him harm. But the crime is as it is. You were not going to treat the king good. And that is liable enough in a royal kingdom that you will be dead. And the thing was made known to Mordecai. He found out who told it unto Esther, the queen. So she's queen now. And Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. She went before the king and said, King, Mordecai has told me, not mention who Mordecai is, not mention who her people are, but Mordecai, the man that sits outside your gate, has told me these two men have harm mentioned, have thought of, and have planned out to do you harm, king. Mordecai told me that. And when in Inquisition, to look, to examine, to find proof, to find evidence, a trial was made of the matter, it was found out. These men are guilty. Therefore, they were both hanged on a tree. Capital punishment. And it was written in the book of the Chronicles before the king and certified by Mordecai, which God will use later, for the favor of the Jewish people and the favor of Mordecai and of Esther. God's not mentioned, but he's there. 